Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to show you some satellite telescopes. These are telescopes that date to uh, Cold War era, Sputnik era, as a matter of fact, around 1957, uh, after the Russians launched Sputnik in that year, there was a great flurry of activity, and people become ve became very interested in observing um, orbiting satellites, as they were called back in the day, artificial moons. Um, this book was written, uh, it's a fairly recent book, this book was written about the whole era. It's called Keep Watching the Skies by W. Patrick McRae. Uh, so if you're very interested, you might want to have a look at that book, pick it up or something. Uh, there are also several articles in Sky and Telescope and other magazines and online. I only have a few of the satellite telescopes that are known, and I'd love to collect all of them. It might be quite challenging, but I have uh, at least a couple of the prime examples. Uh, most of you have probably seen this telescope. This is the Unitron Satellite Telescope. Uh, the most rare and probably most prestigious of the uh, satellite telescopes from that era. Very unitron quality all the way through. Very high um, uh, levels of workmanship in the, uh, in the telescope, in the mount, everything. Very, very high level of quality. And I think what's interesting, uh, well, will probably be interesting for you, certainly would have been interesting to me when I started looking into this, uh, was to see a, a comparison, side-by-side -side comparison. For example, in the pictures, this little telescope looks every bit as imposing as this one. And you can see that in person, it is not. It's a much smaller telescope. It's cute, it's charming, but it's a, it's a much smaller, a whole different beast. This is the Swift Technar satellite telescope. It's a tiny baby version of the Unitron. It's got little setting circles. Uh, for right ascension, uh, or I'm sorry, altitude and azimuth, uh, and you can be moved and so forth. So it's very close, uh, very close imitation of of that scope. I'll show you close-ups of all of these here in a minute. This is another one called an SPI, and unfortunately I don't have the mount for this, but the mount would have been similar to uh, both of these mounts, a kind of an alta azimuth mount and it's got a focusing eyepiece here. This is a 50 millimeter aperture. This I think is a 30 millimeter aperture. And then probably the most famous and the most common and the one you'll see pictured mostly in this book is this one. This is an Edmund and in this case it's a whole different ball game. I'll show you a close-up here in a minute. Anyway this has got a telescope that looks down at a mirror and the mirror looks up to the sky. So it's a kind of a different arrangement. It serves the same function. Let's do uh, some close-ups. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of these telescopes. First of all, this is the Unitron Satellite Telescope. I hope you will take a few minutes to go view my video on this. I've gone into this particular telescope in great detail. It's a wonderful, charming uh, little telescope. So I hope you'll take a look at that. Next, let's take a look at this one. This is the SPI 7x50 Satellite Telescope, made in Japan. It says right on the label. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter, and it looks for all the world like a 50 millimeter finder might look. There's a couple of dead giveaways. One is that this is entirely, this is one piece. This looks like a casting here with the mirror. Uh, probably a mirror inside there, maybe a prism, could be a prism. Anyway, there's a mirror or prism inside this housing, and it's all, it, it's firmly attached, it's not going to be removable. And the focusing eyepiece is integral also. So those are a couple of dead giveaways. I wish I had the mount, it would have been a little Alta Azimuth mount that sat here, um, like something like that. Next, let's take a look at the Swift Technar 6.5 by 30, model 616 or 816, I guess. And this telescope would have worked similar to the Unitron. There is a little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little azimuth pointer, and there's an altitude pointer, and a little tiny setting circle. This is not nearly 
as big and therefore not nearly as useful as the unitron. But in principle, you could easily have used this to at least make some approximate measurements of where something would have been found in the sky. So it's got a lot of the features of the unitron, uh, but as you can see, it's considerably inferior in many respects. Okay, here's a close-up of the little Technar by Swift. And you can tell that those little setting circles are tiny. I had to take a fairly extreme close-up to get this close to the little thing. Now let's compare that with the Unitron. Uh, these are much bigger circles, much finer engravings. Last but certainly not least is probably the most common. This is the Edmund or Edscorp satellite scope. Matter of fact, this even has a serial number, serial number 107. And this is an entirely different kind of a beast. You look down through here and it, the light comes from the object, a star or whatever you might be looking at, bounces up into the telescope like that. Uh, and this is a focusing eyepiece here, has a crosshair inside of course. It doesn't have a convenient system for altitude and azimuth measurements. I've seen pictures of these with a little protractor here so that you could attempt to measure the uh, altitude and probably you could have set it on a table or something with some sort of a more precise av uh, azimuth measurement as well. This loosens up here, these two little screws loosen up so you can tilt the whole thing at least through a certain range in altitude and this is not adjustable. In other words, you can't change the angle between the mirror and the telescope, at least not without bending a pretty substantial hunk of metal here. It's not intended that that happen. This is meant to be a 45 degree angle or give you a 90 degree angle uh, of reflection here. I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of satellite telescopes. Thank you.